scene of the Gold Cup Regatta, the 46th, and the highlight of the 1953 Seattle Sea Fair celebration. Speedboats ever to vie for the coveted Gold Cup. No possible vantage point is missed. are the fastest boats, finest mechanics and drivers in America. One thought uppermost in their minds. Win that cup. Danny Foster, driver of Miss Great Lakes 2. Fire-eating Bill Cantro, driver of Such Crust 5. Chuck Thompson, driving Such Crust 3. Famed designer racer Dan Arena, driving Miss United States. Lee Shonith, Gale 2, running his first Gold Cup race since returning from Army duty in Korea. Keenly aware of the stiff competition they must overcome, Joe Taggart and Lou Fagel, the drivers of Slow Motion 4, are firmly determined to keep the Gold Cup. The grand old lady, Slow Mo 4, twice winner of the Gold Cup, is serviced with stock mobile oil in preparation for the grueling test ahead. Crews make last-minute checks and adjustments, especially the crew of Slow Mo 4. All depends on her performance today. The officials on the starting barge are ready. The three and three-quarter mile oval course is ready. The boats are ready and head for the starting line. Six powerful boats, with the drivers of five having but one thought, beat Joe Taggart driving Slow Mo. Quick warm-up. The one-minute gun gives its warning. The huge pie-faced clock starts on its 60-second journey. The big hydros maneuver for position and roar toward the starting line with slow-mo four in front. They're off, and another great gold cup race is underway. The course has been stretched to three and three-quarter miles this year. Each boat will make eight laps to cover the 30 miles of each heat. Men, machinery, fuels, lubricants, hulls, and equipment will get a harder beating this year than ever before because of the longer course and tougher competition. It will be a wonder if any can finish the full 90 miles. Right from the start, Slow Mo 4, holder of the world speed record of 178 miles per hour, has had the lead with ample speed to spare. To the wild screams of encouragement from her Seattle boosters, the winner of the 1950 and 52 Gold Cup is out to do it again. two miles per hour was Slow Mo's average in the first lap, and she finished the 30-mile heat with an average of 95 and a quarter miles per hour. Her two-bladed propeller turning nearly 12,000 revolutions per minute. Slow Mo 4 romps across the finish line, an easy 20 seconds ahead of Gale 2. The first heat is now history. As the five roaring hydros start the second, Slow Mo 4 is boxed in by her rival. Lou Fagel at the wheel fights his way to the starting line, but is last to cross it. Hope fades for Seattle's entry. Only for a minute. By the end of the first lap, Slow Mo 4 is out in front again. A lap and a half, it was a duel between Slow Mo 4 and Gale 2 that took the lap speed up to 104 and a half miles per hour, 
before slow-mo regained the lead and won the heat. What a thrill pack race with slow-mo for Wars Day if she just keeps going. A flashing win of the third and final heat by Slow Mo Four. Ken Sayers, owner. Gold Cup winners and champions all. It's the big Seattle Seafair event we've all been waiting for. The 46th running of the Gold Cup races presented for your enjoyment by the Love Electric Company and CBS Columbia Television and Radio Receivers and CBS Columbia Record Players and Columbia Records. And now we take you to Lake Washington and the ace sports commentator of the Pacific Northwest, Bill O'Mara. Once again, it's good afternoon from the shores of Lake Washington as we wait for the third and final heat of the 1953 edition of the Gold Cup. And it's been quite an afternoon, all in all. But uh, before we take a visit with the various pits and go up to Mount Baker's pits and up to Leshy to find out how the slow mo is doing, and the rest of the boats that are very much in contention in this third and final heat, we want to remind you that you're watching the 1953 Gold Cup direct from the shores of Lake Washington in Seattle. Brought to you by CBS, Columbia Television and Radio Receivers, and Columbia Record Players, and Columbia Records. In approximately 30 minutes, we'll start the third and final heat of the 1953 edition of the Gold Cup. And uh, we might tell you right now that all of the boats that will be out there, with perhaps the outside exception of Miss United States, will have a good chance at that top price in taking the coveted Gold Cup either back to the shores of Lake Washington as represented by Slow Motion 4, which won the first two heats, or it could go back to Detroit. Now, we'll tell you more about that later, but I know that you'll want to know about the conditions of the various boats that will be assembling here for the third and final heat of the Gold Cup. So let's start first of all with Tom Dargan at the Mount Baker Pits. On my right is Such Crust 5, driven by Bill Cantrell, who dropped out early in the second heat. They are now putting in a new drive shaft, and they've just fastened the prop on the rear of that drive shaft. I spoke to Mr. Jack Schaefer, owner of, well, actually, his, his wife is the owner of Such Crust 5. He uh, gave her that for an anniversary present. He told me that the Such Crust 5 would race. They thought they could get it in shape, and as you can see, it looks like they have got it in shape for the third and final heat. He said, not because particularly we have a chance, with such crust five, but we want to make it more of a boat race. That's fine sportsmanship, I think. The Gale two is in fine shape, it will race, such crust three will race, and we think uh, that despite a broken, partially broken left sponson that Miss um, United States will race also. Well, that's the story here, and now let's go back to Bill O'Mara. For the continuation of the story of what's going on with these various boats, let's visit with Dick Ross up at the Leshy Pit. Uh, up here at uh, Leshy, they're just getting ready to put a new propeller on slow motion four. Uh, they made a check after the second heat and determined that uh, determined that there was a little bit of uh, strain on the propeller. Uh, this is Joe Schoberg here with the uh, slow mo five crew who's helping out with four this afternoon since he doesn't have anything to do with five right now. Joe, tell me about this uh, test. How do you how do you how do you test for strain on this propeller? Well, <clears throat> some of these small cracks you can't see by eye, Dick. So you take and clean the prop real good with a special cleaner, and then you uh, use this red dye, which is very penetrating, and it penetrates these cracks, small flaws that you can't see. And you let it set for a certain period of time to penetrate the prop, and then you wipe it off, clean it up, and then put on a fluid which dries real white. And in the process of drying, why the red dye penetrates this white and indicates where the different flaws are. Let's see, now is this the prop that they took off uh, the second heat? After this the is the technique? prop, and you'll see... We, let's hold it up here a little bit. I don't know whether people can see it, but maybe you can see how they put uh, all this, this white uh, material. And you lift it up a little bit, a little bit like that, huh? There we are. Now, right in here is a little red spot, and another red spot here, another red spot here. That's the way they test for it. When they get that white stuff on, then uh, the, the red dye comes through. Is that right, Joe? That's right, Dick. Uh -huh. So uh, they've determined that the propeller uh, it wasn't actually cracked, was it, Joe? No, it isn't cracked. Just strained a little bit, it huh? Just strained a little, that's right. So this is just a safeguard measure that they're changing the shaft and the propeller and uh, getting, thank you, 
getting slow mo four all ready to go again in this third heat. Well, that's the kind of activity that's been taking place here. Nothing really serious, just uh, making the routine checks and taking those extra precautions that they hope will bring them the Gold Cup race for 1953. Uh, that's about the story here. They're just about to, uh, uh, well, they're just uh, raising it up a little bit, raising slow-mo off the trailer a little bit so that they can uh, get uh, back in there and uh, uh, put that propeller on. They have the shaft in. They got the new shaft in the boat, and now they're working at the, at the stern of the boat to put that propeller on. So once they get that done, it's, uh, it's pretty much a matter of just uh, getting the boat out in the water and uh, getting her started. Uh, put Joe Taggart back in the boat. Incidentally, Joe is going to run this third heat. Uh, I think we told you that earlier. Uh, Joe will run the third heat, and uh, we'll just see how he makes out in, the, in uh, uh, battling with those other boats down the line. Well, that's the story from here. Uh, the slow-mo is not in the water yet. We'll be very shortly. Now back to Bill O'Mara on the barge. As we look at the south turn and the activity down there, as far as the spectators are concerned, and the water conditions, uh, might give you a brief explanation of, of the system scoring in the Gold Cup. Now, your first place is worth 400 points, second place 300, and third 225, and so on down the line. You must finish all three heats in order to receive a bonus of 800 points. For the fastest time, you receive an additional 400 points. You reach the fastest time heat, and that will give you 400 points. But you must finish all three heats. Well, that means that slow motion four, gale two, and uh, Mr. United States, such crust three, all have finished the prescribed two heats so far. And if they all finish this third heat, well, as you can see, by that system of scoring, uh, it's going to be quite an interesting uh, third and final heat here at Lake Washington. Of the three races that we've had the pleasure and privilege of covering, and in this particular instance covering for CBS, Columbia Television, and radio receivers, Columbia Record Players, and Columbia Records. Uh, I believe that this has been the most exciting, the most satisfactory from a competitive standpoint because we have a greater number of votes in this third and final heat, and we've seen a tremendous driving strategy out there as personified by the duel between Lou Fadgell and young Lee Shuttleth. I think that the first two heats of this race give every indication that the third heat will be the most exciting of all as these boats strive to take the Gold Cup back to their respective home yacht clubs. Now, uh, we mentioned a moment ago CBS, Columbia Television and Radio Receivers, Columbia Record Players and Columbia Records. You know that they are the ones who are making it possible for you to watch this five-camera coverage from the shores of Lake Washington in the 1953 Gold Cup. In addition to this very fine coverage, which we hope that you're enjoying, made possible by CBS, Columbia Television and Radio, the uh, CBS folks, our Love Electric is offering to the winner of the Gold Cup, the driver who wins this... Uh, third and final heat and the, and the driver who wins the actual Gold Cup will receive a 1954 CBS Columbia television set absolutely free from Love Electric as uh, an extra prize so as to say and an extra impetus most of all the drivers in fact I know know of this and they're just interested in getting that CBS Columbia television receiver as they are in getting the Gold Cup the the, uh, the wind has sprung up just slightly here, and so it means that the third and final heat could conceivably be running a little rougher water than what we've had on the previous two. Now, the card recap for you on the second heat. Slow-mo four in first place at the first lap, and went into second place momentarily as uh, young Lee Shonath beat out Lou Fagel into the south third. But Lou came back in the third lap driving at over 100 miles an hour, around 103 miles an hour. Took over first place and maintained it through the rest of the uh, eight laps and finished in first place to receive a total of 800 points. Actually, on the first place finish of Joe Taggart in the first heat, plus the first place finish in this one, gives him a total of 800 points. Gale, two in second place at the start, went to first place momentarily, and went through second down through the seventh lap, but in the seventh lap had trouble, which you've had explained to you and ultimately wound up in third place and now has a total of 525 points. Miss Great Lakes is second. Broke a shaft in the first heat and didn't start in the second. Miss United States started in fourth, finished in fourth, and has a total of 296 points after two heats. Such Crest three was in third place up through the sixth lap, and then when, uh, actually up through the seventh lap. 
and uh, after that, in the eighth lap, was able to overtake the uh, in trouble Gale Two, as Lee had trouble and had to idle down to practically nothing, and it wasn't long before such crest, such crest three took over and came out of the uh, north turn and was able to take the last heat and move into second place and give him a total of 469 points on his uh, efforts for the first two heats. And such crest five had uh, a total of uh, 229 points. You can see the wind and how bad it is out here because we haven't had any trouble previous to this in the first two heats, but uh, we do have it now. So such crest five, I, uh, you heard the report from up there in the pits. Uh, you know the situation as it stands there. You know that any one of these uh, boats, as it now stands, has a pretty good chance. They're all trying to qualify for that extra 800 bonus points. So I think we're going to have quite a race out here in the third and final heat of the Gold Cup. That's the point situation. We hope that you have a basic understanding of how many points are involved and that you'll realize that each and every one of these boats must be in good condition. And speaking of that condition, how about it, Tommy Dargan? What goes on in your area? What goes on is a lot of excitement, Bill. Everyone down here is very interested, as you are, I'm sure, in this third and final heat because it's still very much of a boat race. Most of the eyes in the Mount Baker pit are turned toward Gale 2 and the other of Gale 2. The other people down here who are in a position to know, even Bill Cantrell, the driver of Such Crust 5, are all looking toward the young driver in Gale 2. That's the boat that's been pressing the slow mo for this afternoon and been doing a very fine job of it too. There was some contention here about whether or not in terms of Gold Cup competition it was a good thing that Chuck Thompson in the Such Crust 3 passed Gale 2 in the final lap of the second heat. But of course that's competition and everybody's out trying to win every lap in every heat, if not the entire race. We were hoping to talk to Lee Schoenth here, but the boy is resting. That's hard work, and I've learned one thing if I've learned nothing else. When these drivers come off the water, come up here to the pits, they're tired and they're tense, and believe me, they've worked hard. This is a tough job. Mechanics work hard too, but not under the pressure that the men do who are out driving here on Lake Washington. I think we all should have a great deal of respect, not only for the owners, the mechanics, and the drivers, but everyone that's associated with such a fine sport as this, with such a marvelous spirit of competition here. The other boats would like to win right now. We've got a pit full of people here who are pulling for Gale 2. It'll be the, it'll be this next heat. It will prove whether or not slow-mo Four keeps the Gold Cup here in Seattle or whether it goes back to Detroit. This is the boat, Gale 2. I don't want to jinx the Gale 2, but that's the boat that I'm going to watch in this next heat. And I imagine that you will too. This is the boat that gave Slow 4, Slow Mo 4, such a race until it developed waterline trouble. I did find out specifically what that was. That was a hose. That was the water hose on the main strut that broke, and it was easily repaired, and the Gale 2 is in good shape. I'd like to remind you that you can compare the old country corduroy road with today's modern turnpikes and superhighways. So compare ordinary television with CBS Columbia TV with full fidelity 360 sound. Comparison proves you can hear the whole room play. Ask for a demonstration at your CBS Columbia television dealer. That's a very good idea, and now would be a good idea, too, I think, to return to Bill O'Mara at the official barge. I'd like to spend a little time, if I may, and uh, maybe pleasant conjecture here, pleasant or unpleasant as you look at it, on uh, how some of these other boats have a pretty good chance of winning. First of all, a slow motion four, and you saw the precaution that they took in changing the shaft on the uh, propeller, examining for every minute uh, possible point of failure. Slow motion four having 800 points, of course, wouldn't be eligible for any points at all if it shouldn't finish the third and final heat. If it does drive and finishes, it could finish as low as fourth place and still come on with uh, a good enough average to win. Uh, the point that was made here a moment ago by uh, Tommy that uh, perhaps under the circumstances, Gale two should have been allowed to finish second that it, it's such crust uh, three with uh, Chuck Thompson 
uh, at the wheel by taking those extra points, uh, perhaps put the gale too, too far behind in order to pick up enough distance on slow-mo four to win a short while. All are eligible for that 800 point uh, margin. Now, if any one of these boats, and I mean specifically slow motion four in this case, when I speak of this example, if they should fail to finish the third heat, then 800 points bonus going to say Gale two for whatever position they fit in. So, if you think that merely because slow motion four won the first two heats, that the heat is not, if you'll pardon the pun, in the third and final heat to get that 800 point bonus and to make sure a victory, no matter where they finish in the race, they could finish last and with that 800 points, the chances are that they would win, except that if every other boat finished and was eligible for that 800 points, that makes a difference too. And also there's a fast lap time. Uh, there's a lot of ways to make points and if we go into it and become too technically inclined now, it'll only confuse the issue. But uh, you may as well keep it right down to this. The boats that are now left in the race all have a good chance to come out on top in case of failure of any one of the other four. And of course, at the moment, because slow motion four has 800 points, it's slow motion four against the field. And that's the way it's been from the very start. There's been a lot of talk uh, at times about whether or not the Detroit boats would race as an entry. In other words, that they would combine their efforts to try to defeat the slow mos four and five or the slow mos four and five individually, whichever one happened to qualify. I think that it was clearly indicated that such press three driven by Chuck Thompson in the true spirit of sportsmanship is, that prevails around the Gold Cup, that uh, undoubtedly such press three drives to win, that they weren't trying to plan to put the Gale two in there with as many points as possible by giving second place to them. Such press three drove to win, and it received as high a position as it possibly could. Well, more of that later. Right now, a reminder that you're watching the 1953 Gold Cup, direct from the shores of Lake Washington in Seattle. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a beautiful day here at Lake Washington as we wait the start of the third and final heat of the Gold Cup. So let's relax for the moment and uh, drop down to the south end of the barge and visit with Bill Corcoran, who has some interesting people for you to meet, I'll bet. Standing next to me now, I'd like you to meet the judge of the Superior Court here, Judge Frank James, who incidentally is also Commodore of the Seattle Yacht Club. And while we think of these Gold Cup races each year as the highlight event in our seafair activities, it is true, is it not, Judge James, that the Seattle Yacht Club does actually sponsor the Gold Cup race. Well, we, we do more than sponsor it, uh, Bill. We actually uh, put it on the committee, which has done the wonderful work and the, the great detailed work that you see must have been necessary, was appointed by me as the Commodore of the Yacht Club, and with one or two exceptions, all of the members of the committee are active members of the Yacht Club. Would you like to go out on a limb, Judge James, and say to whom you expect to present this cup? Well, I'm sure that anyone listening to us knows who I think is going to win, but I won't say so officially. Judge James, just a final question. How do you feel about uh, today's Gold Cup event as we've seen it thus far compared to previous years? Well, that puts me on the spot because uh, this happens to be my year as Commodore, and so I want it to be a great success. I, I, I'm sure that it, it equals the, the Gold Cup regattas of previous years, but I wouldn't say that it exceeded them. We've had a, a wonderful committee headed by Howard Richmond, but Phil Smith, our Commodore for the past two years, also had wonderful committees with Jerry Bryant, and they did all the spade work, so it should have been a little bit easier for us this year. Well, let's put it this way, Judge James. Each, uh, Judge James, each year the Seafair Gold Cup race gets better, and this year is no exception. Oh, well, all right. <laughs> you said it, not I. Thank you very, very much, okay, Judge Bill. Frank James for joining us here at Mike's side. Now, let's go topside of the barge again and see what's with Bill O'Mara. <laughs> 